So, indeed, uh, as mentioned also by uh, by Victor already this morning, uh, we have an uh, innovation support fund in place, which uh, um, basically is aiming at uh, SMEs in the Northwest Europe region. Uh, so, if you have a particular uh, pick which you would like to take uh, to a to a next step, um, so beyond proof of concept demonstration. Uh, so, if you have already something uh, something available, but that you would like to to scale up, then uh, there is a possi possibility to apply to our uh, call for uh, vouchers, um, where you can receive up to fifty kilo euros of uh, financial support um, by uh, access to the uh, to the pilot line. So the, the vouchers can cover the design verification to check compatibility of the design with the with our pilot line, as well as the manufacturing of the picks, the external optics, and the packaging of those components. So the call has opened uh, on the 22nd of January. We had a couple of webinars, including the one of today. Uh, and the call will be open until the 15th of April. So um, between now and then, you have time to submit uh, an expression of interest. Uh, so there is a, a one-page uh, document in which you can briefly describe your uh, your uh, intention to uh, to apply to the uh, to the call, uh, and then we can already do an early uh, uh, eligibility check. And um, then you can, if uh, agreed upon, you can uh, submit a full application form. Uh, you, you will also have to sign a proxy NDA uh, in due time, such that by the time the call closes, we can evaluate the, uh, the proposals by uh, the selection committee that has been uh, set to get, put together uh, within the network. And we expect to be able to announce the winners of the vouchers uh, in the course of the month uh, June of this year. Um, so all of the information is also available on the website. And so you see the link there uh, at the bottom. Um, but I will briefly go through some of these documents that need to be filled out and the requirements to which you should adhere um, in order to be eligible to uh, the voucher scheme. So first of all, you need to be an SME according to the European definition, and you need to be based in the Northwest Europe uh, area as defined by the Interreg program. So uh, the, the two links are mentioned here on the slides, uh, so that you can have uh, a look at the map and at the definition to be sure uh, whether you comply or not. As mentioned, uh, your technology readiness level should be four or higher. So you should have uh, preferably uh, a pig design ready and, and, and uh, preferably a validated prototype already. Yeah? So um, we are mostly aiming at, uh, at trying to upscale uh, production, so to provide, a, uh, to provide a series of devices rather than, uh, than a proof of concept demonstrator. Um, and next to this technical feasibility, you should also uh, prove a, a business case. Yeah? So you, you need to show that, um, uh, that your access to the pilot line and the, and the scale-up uh, result of, this, uh, of, the, of the project will positively impact your business, which can be either through increased revenues or to, through the creation of new jobs. Um, of course, you should also comply with, uh, with the minimum uh, criterion for state aid. Well, we'll it's a little bit more uh, uh, administrative, but uh, yeah, I can provide some further information on that if, uh, if required. And uh, as mentioned, you should submit a fully completed application form, sign a proxy NDA such that all of the members of the voucher selection committee can, uh, can evaluate the proposal. And finally, um, it's, also, uh, it's also required that the voucher recipients uh, agree to collaborate on documenting their use case. And so this is just to, to use um, these, uh, these pilot cases as dissemination material to attract further users in the future um, after, um, after the first round of voucher projects have been, uh, have been finished. It is clearly indicated which information is to be made public uh, in the application form. Yeah. So, as mentioned, the application procedure is uh, consisting of two steps. Yeah. So, first, there is a, an expression of interest form, which, could, which should be filled out and, uh, and sent to this uh, voucher at OIP uh, for uh, nwe.eu uh, email address. It's, uh, it's only containing some very general information, uh, contact information, and, uh, and, uh, and a brief description of, uh, of the project you intend to do. And uh, in the second step, there is a, a full uh, application, which is also uh, quite limited in, uh, in, in page numbers. Huh? So this should be submitted by the call closure on the 15th of April. And uh, let's just browse through that in a little bit more detail. 
Um, so you have, first of all, some uh, company information. And the asterisk here indicates the, the things that we would uh, make public uh, in the end um, it's for, for dissemination purposes. So uh, uh, contact, company contact persons, some general project information about application domains and so on. And then the project description, this is basically the, the technical side of things. Uh, so again, there is a, a short abstract which should describe in a couple of lines what the project is about uh, in a way that it's you know presentable in uh, for for public purposes, uh, and then you can go in a, in a little bit more detail uh, with information that is only that is confidential and will also, it will stay uh, within the, uh, the evaluation committee. Context of the innovation proposal: uh, some general description of the approach that uh, you, that you plan to follow, some major challenges or target specifications that you expect, and so this is some some further detail on the technicalities. And then in part B of the application, we're looking at the impact on uh, the company's business, as mentioned. Again, put on my laser pointer, that makes it maybe a bit clearer than my mouse. Um, so there should be some information on uh, on the business aspects, yeah? so about the target markets, the market validation, the route to market that is expected, uh, your unique competitive advantage, and, uh, and a brief uh, business plan. And, uh, and importantly, also uh, your your new business and EU jobs that are that you expect to be created from this project. And so, uh, in in, uh, in this table, you can fill out the, the expected new revenues in the five years following the completion of the project, or the additional number of uh, full-time equivalent uh, jobs that you plan to hire, uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to the results of the project. Once uh, you have uh, submitted your proposal, then the evaluation committee will uh, evaluate it uh, after the call closure, and it will be evaluated uh, against the following criteria, uh, which all have an associated weight assigned to them. So first of all, we will look at the innovative character of the project. And so uh, um, yeah, is, it, um, is it really uh, creating valuable know-how? Uh, is, is the big uh, key enabling element in the project? And then secondly, also related to this is the technical feasibility and the quality of the project plan. And so is, the, is the, the, the project compatible with the pilot line? What is the current TRL level and so on and so forth. But next to these technical uh, aspects, and we will also look at the credibility and level of commitment of the company. So uh, the level of financial command, commitment uh, refers to the fact that uh, a 20 percent financial contribution is required from the SME uh, 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 until the maximum of 50k euro support. Uh, and of course, if uh, if the project the total project size would be uh, larger than 50 kilo euros, then of course anything above the 50k should be uh, fully funded by the SME. Um, as well as some uh, some track record in, in, in bringing products to the market, uh, successfully completing uh, funded projects, and so on and so forth. The fourth uh, aspect on which uh, the evaluation will be based is the added value on the business case and the potential impact. And as mentioned, that these are also important uh, things to take into account and are directly related to the questions that are asked in the business plan part B of the proposal. Yeah. Uh, each of these criteria should be scored at least uh, should score at least two and a half out of five, and the total score uh, of, of the four in total should be at least 20 out of 30 to be uh, eligible for the vouchers. Um, and next to those aspects, uh, the, the, the selection committee might also take into account ge geographical distribution across the Northwest Europe region. That's in case we have many, uh, many, many applications and that we need to also ensure some geographical distribution as well as distribution over different application sectors. And we have to avoid that, uh, if possible, that all seven vouchers are from, uh, from uh, for example, the telecom application market. All right. So, all in all, uh, for more information, you can visit the website or send an email to voucher at yp4nwe.eu, and uh, we will get in touch and provide you with any uh, answer to the questions uh, you may have about the, the voucher scheme. And of course, I'm also willing to answer any questions you may have at this point. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>